10 years ago, uh, the Green River Community College Foundation took somewhat of a risk in partnership with the college and with an organization called Capstone. We built student housing on this campus. How many community colleges out there do you know have student housing? When you have student housing, you need student leaders to live in that housing to help the students who live there. One of those student leaders was Johnny Gana. And Johnny's with us tonight to take us from where he was back then, what he's doing today, teaching environmental science for the Puget Sound Educational School District. That works, I missed it just a little bit, he'll tell you. Um, and you know, J Johnny is a Green River Community College student. He is a, an alumni, he's a leader, but he's traveled the same path many of you have. So I've always wanted to be able to do this. So here's Johnny. You can stand right there. This works. I'm gonna sneak right Shoulders back. Yeah. Yeah. Just like they taught you in speech class. Am I good? good. All right. How's it going, everyone? So, as Josh said, uh, my name is Johnny Gana. I was uh, class of 2006 here at Green River Community College. Um, and while at Green River, I was involved in the CLEO program, Teachers of Tomorrow Club, Global, Connect, Global Community Organization, I was an RA, and also a TRIO student. And while these opportunities helped shape who I was as a leader, it was due to the foundation scholarships that I was able to make being a student in college a possibility. Uh, I was very fortunate, as you can see in the program, to receive three scholarships my second year here as a student, which I really needed. <laughs> um, I come from a family where college wasn't in the plan. I not only graduated from Green River as the student body vice president, but when, went on to graduate from the University of Redlands in Southern California as the student body president. Um, and now I work for Highline School District as a, as a teacher at the Puget Sound Skills Center. While my leadership made me known as a student on campus, as we all know, that doesn't pay the bills. Um, the Green River Foundation support allowed me to be able to be seen as for my strengths as a leader on campus, and this, um, the support was exponentially needed during my academic career. My experience at Green River has allowed me to see things from so many different perspectives. I still to this day remember my time here very well. From the extracurricular activities to having professors that actually cared about what they were doing in the field, to support staff that was con constantly there to answer questions. These experiences helped shape me as a productive and successful student at the time, and now not only as a darn good teacher, I'm told at least, um, but an active member in my community. Immediately after high school, I found a job, and I thought that that was it. I didn't apply for colleges, I didn't even look into community colleges, I was gonna go work. Um, a friend of mine came to Green River that first year, and he could not stop talking about the place and the people. I think his exact words are something like, anyone can make it here, even you. <laughs> Um, the funny part is he and I then went on to be the president and vice president our final year here at the community college and that was like an amazing opportunity. Uh, nonetheless, I seized the opportunities given to me and jumped right into my experience. Being at a school that not only provided me opportunities to shine inside and outside of the classroom, um, I was also able to provide me, it also provided me the resources such as my scholarships which truly changed my life. I went from being that kid who thought college was a fairy tale to being that guy who was the first in his family to graduate with a degree ever. Being here and being a part of so many programs impacted me in a great way. Being one of the first RAs at the Campus Corner Apartments made for several interesting experiences. I believe they kept saying, this is the growing year, the learning years, we're learning these years. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, in fact, I now actually work with another former RA that was also a scholarship recipient in my school district, and she and I together are continuing to build in the community that we established here at Green River. But the best part now has to be that I get the opportunity to send students to Green River Community College. Uh, being at the Skill Center, I teach high school seniors, and so I get the chance to give them a couple of uh, hints as to which colleges might be the best for them. Um, I get to work with these students to say things like, I don't feel like going to college or college isn't for me. And I know that it's because I was that kid that was in fear, that I knew the financial hardship that it may have had on my family and I know it's the same for theirs. But due to my experience as a Gator, I get to look at those students and tell them, yes, you can. 
Over the past couple of years, I've had the chance to send students of mine to Green River, and I've gotten to see how the campus has also impacted them. Some have also been RAs at the Campus Corner Apartments, involved in other Clio positions, and one who I'm very proud of is actually um, Tevin Gladney, who is the current student body president, also a scholarship recipient of the Sprenger family. Um, he can't be here this evening because he's actually in Portland representing Green River at a conference as stage crew uh, at this National Association for Campus Activities. So this school is providing him opportunities just like me. And he was a student that didn't know what, if college was a possibility as well. Something about this place just makes you feel good as not only a student but as a person. The fact that there is a foundation providing these opportunities regularly year after year is truly amazing. The scholarship went a long way for me, and I'm now able to do my part as an educator to pay it forward and help our youth know that they do have a future, whether it be at Green River or somewhere else. But trust me, I always plug Green River. So thank you to everyone who ever believed in me as a student. But most importantly, thank you for believing in my students, such as Tevin. And there's so many more future Gators I will definitely be sending your way. Thank you. All right. So Johnny, I've been trying to get you to speak at Scholarship Night for like three years. Yeah. And they have, actually the first time was, I'm looking at a young lady over there, Lindsay Garland. And when she spoke last year, somehow Johnny Ganah's name came up. And then we were meeting Tevin Gladney this year and he was gonna volunteer to speak at Scholarship Night and Johnny Ganah's name came up. So it's those amazing connections that uh, this young man and Green River Community College kind of set things in motion. But the other ways that sometimes his uh, connections work real well, uh, how many of you have had a child go through Camp Waskowitz, a sixth grade camp, or have went, gone through that? We see some people away in the back. My son went through th sixth grade camp up there a couple years ago, and it's one of the most amazing transformational experiences that he had in the Kent School District. And I understand that being at sixth grade camp, you had a transformational experience yeah. when you were there. Can you just comment on that real quick? Uh, I met. My girlfriend, who's here, <laughs> can't. So G is a sixth grade teacher, <laughs> and they met. So sometimes those opportunities, you know, always be open to those opportunities that are out there. So Johnny, <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Just right before George comes up here, I did want to let you know, first of all, uh, Johnny wanted to match the hairstyle du jour. <laughs> So he got that specially, or maybe it was George the other way around. Um, but trying, speaking of trying some things new, we do have uh, some, um, some beef, Salisbury steak, as I understand. It's out there, so if you didn't get uh, some before, you're welcome to go up there and, uh, and get something now. It, usually when I'm talking, is a good time to get up, stretch your legs, uh, get that scratch, because when the students are speaking, you want to be uh, bound to your seat and listening. But somebody who's got some great things to say is George Frazier, the Executive Director of the Green River Community College Foundation. Good evening, how is everybody? Fantastic. You know, this is one of the nights I look forward to every single year, seeing the connections that get made between our students and our donors and volunteers and staff members. Uh, it's amazing to be part of a community of caring adults who are invested in seeing students and young people and folks perhaps who aren't so young coming back to Green River do well and go on and realize the dreams that have been inside them for all of their lives. So uh, for the faculty and staff and my colleagues, thank you for being that group of folks who are making this happen for so many folks. It's amazing. Um, we're going to start uh, warming up with a game of George Says. Like Simon Says, but it's George Says because it's my podium right now. So you play George Says by standing and then remaining standing until George Says while we recognize all of our special guests. So we start off with uh, George Says, if uh, John Chudy, who is our sponsor from the Boeing Company, if you're here, please stand up. Thank you very much. And George says, stand up if you are president of the trustees of Green River Community College, Pete Lewis and his wife, Kathy. George says, stand up if you're Mark Albertson, GRCC trustee and his wife, Elizabeth. 
George says, stand up. If you're Dr. Eileen Ely, president of Green River Community College, and her husband, John. Yes, John, you get to stand up as well. George says, stand up. If you're Rich Rakowski, former president, GRCC, and his wife, Shirley. Come on, Shirley, you got to stand up, too. <laughs> George says, please stand up. If you're Sue Benedict, my other boss, foundation board president, and her husband, Larry. George says to stand up if you're a member of the Green River Community College Foundation Board. So we should see a lot of people standing up now. All of you stand up. Come on, everyone up. Uh, George says to stand up if you're one of Green River Community College's innovative, caring, and outstanding faculty members, superb staff, or amazing administrators. So stand up. All of you guys are doing that great work. That should be a lot more folks out there, too. You see where this is going, right? All right, George says to stand up if you're a donor to the foundation. All the donors, stand up. Yeah, heck yeah. Okay, I'm expecting a big reaction now. George says, stand up if you're a scholarship recipient. If you're a scholarship recipient, you gotta stay standing, everyone stay standing. Stand up if you're a scholarship recipient. Okay, here we go. Now George says, stand up if you're a family member of a scholarship recipient, or if you're happy to be in attendance at this evening, or you're happy to be here. There you go. Because George and all of our guests tonight are special guests and ask that you please be seated. We are here to celebrate tonight. What are we celebrating? We are celebrating that the foundation can play a role in placing students in classrooms and programs with dynamic, caring, and innovative faculty and staff. We are celebrating a community of donors who are absolutely and totally committed to your success, committed to student success. And we are definitely celebrating an investment this year of over $400,000 in nearly 300 scholarships. We are definitely celebrating that, for sure. We are also celebrating a new tradition this year, and that new tradition is the Scholarship Recipient Pledge. Don't be frightened, all right? But I need every single recipient to please stand up and prepare to repeat after me. So all of you stand up who are scholarship recipients, all right? This will be sort of painless. That'll be completely painless, all right. So repeat after me, so here we go. I solemnly swear to persist until I achieve my goals and reach my dreams. We're going to do that one more time. Here we go. Persist until I achieve my goals and reach my dreams. Scream it out, guys. That's it. I am going to invest, so invest effort in improving my community and profession. We'll let that one go. That was my fault. That one wasn't good. Here we go. Let's, let's belt this one out. Commit to lifelong learning and improvement. Heck yeah, that's what we're talking about. And we're Recipients, we believe in you fiercely. Remind yourself, particularly when you're having a tough day, when it's not coming easy, that there is a community. Look around you. There is a community behind you that cares, believes in you, and most of all, most of all, is rooting for your success every step of the way. We are rooting for you. Go out and make it happen. Thank you very much for being here this evening, and I'll turn this back over to Josh. So thank you, George, and everybody here just experienced what in our office we call getting your wig on. 
And if you don't know what that means, thanks uh, Dr. Derek Brandis over there, wigs are your wildly important goals. And George just got all of you to publicly affirm what your wildly important goals are. So good job. Now you're going to have to come up with some graphs and charts to demonstrate to George how you're proceeding on achieving those goals. Don't worry, you only have to have it done by Monday. Okay, so speaking of charts and graphs, uh, we're at that point of the program, we have four dynamic student speakers. We wish we could have every one of you student recipients up here and share a slice of your story. And when we meet many of you at our scholarship reception at the beginning of October, when you first get back to school, that's our first chance to meet you in person after seeing all those applications that come through and seeing, reading all these things on paper. And when we were there this year, we said, we need some people to speak at scholarship night. And four of you immediately, no arm twisting or calling you on the phone, begging, you know, offering to drive you here, wash your car, anything like that. You stepped forward and you said, I want to speak at that event. The first speaker we have tonight is in our business program. So that's where the graphs and the charts come through. She can illustrate what it means to be successful. She's not only in the Green River Community College business program, but she's about to start the, in the first class of the Bachelors of Applied Science in Business. But she's going to tell you about that. So it's my pleasure to welcome up Ashley Lijon. First and foremost, I would like to thank everyone that has been a part of my educational journey. Without each and every one of you, I have not gotten as far as I am today. I am grateful to my scholarship donors, Ford and Iris Basil, and Ford Keeney. Your financial contributions will significantly relieve the financial pressure off of my family and allow me to focus on my studies. I am also incredibly thankful to TRIO, especially Debbie Herndon. Throughout my time at GRCC, TRIO has provided emotional support, advising services, and most importantly, tutoring resources. Debbie has not only been my private tutor, at times she has been my counselor, and I definitely would not have made it through the math sequence without her. I am also extremely appreciative to all my professors, particularly Professor Broxholm and Professor Perlot. While all my professors have played a part in my education, Professor Broxholm and Professor Perlot have not only been professors, to me, they have been mentors, motivators, and inspirational coaches. Most importantly, my deepest gratitude and love belong to my family. Without my husband, Antony, and my son, Jawan, I would never have had the opportunity to attend college, let alone graduate. They have both been incredibly patient during long nights of studying and have been very supportive even when housework and my family duties have been overlooked. I am very lucky to have such a wonderful family and support system, and I love you both with all my heart. During high school, I never had the opportunity to think about going to college or furthering my education. Just before the start of my junior year, my mom was diagnosed with colon cancer. To make things worse, my grandma was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer shortly after. This was one of the most difficult years of my life. My mom underwent radiation and chemotherapy and was attached to a morphine pump that prevented her from driving. I transferred from my regular high school to enroll part-time at an alternative school where I spent my mornings. During the afternoons, I spent my time driving my mom and my grandma to doctor's appointments and therapies. Sadly, in March of my junior year, my grandma passed. Then two weeks before the start of my senior year, I lost my mom. Losing the two people that were closest to me within a five and a half month period forever changed my life. While I attempted to continue attending high school part time during my senior year, I ended up dropping out after a few months to help support my family and take care of my 13 year old brother. My father worked full time and traveled very frequently and emotionally I just didn't have the energy to focus on school, work and my family duties. About a year after I was supposed to have graduated, I enrolled in Cascadia Community College and earned my high school diploma with high honors. However, I wasn't able to continue my college career as I was living on my own, financially supporting myself, and working two jobs. I continued to work full time until a couple of years ago when I was diagnosed with a severe permanent disability and laid off from work shortly afterwards. While this was extremely traumatizing for me, it was a blessing in disguise. The layoff allowed me the opportunity to attend college through the worker retraining program. When I started at GRCC, I had no clue what I wanted to do, and I started working towards an associate in arts direct transfer degree. A couple quarters into my degree, I started to become frustrated and I wanted to give up. My disability was affecting me in my day classes, and math was definitely a struggle. I can't describe how many times during my math classes I felt like giving up and dropping out. 
Without private tutoring provided by Debbie and Trio, I would have never been able to complete my math sequence. I will never forget the first quarter that I met Professor Perlot. It was spring of 2013 and I was a student in his international business course. He is a remarkable professor and the way that he taught the course really clicked with my learning style. I remember that quarter was the first time that I realized I could be successful. I finally had my drive back. Shortly after taking Professor Pollard's course, I transferred to the business management program and in winter of 2014, I met Professor Broxholm. To say that he has changed my life is an understatement. Over the past year, Professor Broxholm has not only been my instructor, he's been my mentor, my career coach, and my inspiration to continue my education. He has motivated me to further my schooling and he's made me want to become a better person. He encourages me to have integrity and ethics and he has helped me to improve my self-esteem and develop into someone that I am proud to be. I can honestly say that if I had not met Professor Broxholm, I would not be the person that I am today and I will forever be grateful. I am proud to say that in less than a month, I will be graduating with a degree in business management with a 4.0 GPA. And in January, I will be joining the first cohort of the Bachelors in Applied Sciences and Marketing and Entrepreneurship program. Once I complete that program, I expect to become the first person in my family to have earned a bachelor's degree. I am very proud to call myself a GRCC student, and I'm honored that my son, Jawan, is following in my footsteps. He has been a student at GRCC and a member of TRIO for a little over a year now, and I'm flattered every time I hear that my work ethic has worn off on him. He is constantly studying and working, doing schoolwork, and he's earned high grades in all of his courses, including a 4.0 in pre-calculus. I hope that he will continue his education and become a future scholarship recipient. Again, I am extremely grateful to everyone that has supported me along the way. The funding that I will receive from the Ford and Iris Basil Scholarship will allow me to start the bachelor's program without putting financial pressure on my family and will prevent me from having to take out student loans. And the love and support that I receive from my family will encourage me along the way. Your support means to the, wor the world to me and I can truthfully say thanks to you. I'm going to be somebody successful. Thank you. Well, George got you guys primed good for all that st standing and sitting. Uh, I wasn't trying to prime the audience, though, to, for that. What I wanted to do, Ashley, is uh, and just make sure that everybody knows uh, that Anthony and Joan are right there uh, here supporting you, as is Professor Broxholm, and give them a hand for the amazing uh, support they provided you during this journey. Okay, so I know you can all hear us tonight in this great sound system. It was pointed out to me backstage that when Johnny Gana was vice president, student body vice president, the student class gift was the sound system that we're still using today. Yeah. So, uh, but Johnny, the 10 year warranty on that class gift's coming up, so call those alums and you know, we could use an upgrade in the new student life building. Actually, <laughs> we, we really need to take a moment before our next speaker for a couple of reasons. We're standing here in this building, the Lynn Bloom Student Center, on the stage that was uh, built a few years after the building itself was built for events like this, for events such as the Green River Music Company, for performances that our radio station would put on. And there's been a myriad of hundreds and hundreds of amazing events, from the Artists and Speaker Series to student performances during the lunchtime. And this is our last opportunity to celebrate with you on scholarship night in this building. And next year, we will be in the new Student Life building, and we're looking forward to celebrating our 50th anniversary of Green River Community College with you over there uh, next fall. But if we could just take a moment to reflect on what our experiences have been in this building. And in that moment for me, I ask you the question, are you ready to rock? Because the next speaker, Gator Kendrick, or better known on his resume as Rob, Rob's coming up on stage, and Rob is a rocker. I caught some footage of him on YouTube this afternoon and doing a little research for tonight, uh, you know, back in the day. But Rob's taking that passion for rock, and he is now the station manager for um, KGRG1, which is our AM 
radio station. So this might be news to some of you. It's actually owned by the Green River Community College Foundation. And they play those, well, he's going to tell you what they play, right? Absolutely. All right, Rob. Absolutely. Rock on. Thank you, Josh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Fellow students, faculty, foundation members, benefactors, guests, it's a great honor to be here. Absolutely an honor, it really is. I look out here and, and I see these smiling faces and I think about all the things that go into being a college student, number one. And coincidence, right? Coincidence, happenstance, lucky breaks. These are all things that, that we build a great future on, right? No, probably not. Probably not, right? But I have to say that a lot of things like that happen to me, and they're the reason I'm here. I'm going to share a few of those with you tonight. And some of our fellow students who hang, up, hang out up here in the, uh, in the foyer uh, during the day might call them hiccups in the space-time continuum. I mean, you know, that's the, uh, <laughs> their good old uh, vernacular. But anyway, I grew up in the area, um, in Renton area, actually, and I'm in construction all of my life. But I've also, as Josh so eloquently pointed out, I'm a musician, I'm a singer, I like to rock, it's fun, right? However, while I was growing up, it really didn't make a whole lot of money. So I had to make a living, so I learned construction. Learned how to work with my hands from my dad and I learned my love of music from my mom. Those are the things that I really enjoy in life, besides baseball. I'm a baseball freak, just so some of you know. And there's some coincidences that happened along the way that, that brought me here. First of all, in music, I work my, I work my butt off, I really do, to be good at, at what I do. And I got an opportunity to actually sing and perform live on the radio here in Seattle. And this was back in 2010. And I was actually singing with a gentleman named Goldie McJohn. Some of you might know him. Uh, he was the uh, founding member of Steppenwolf. He was a keyboard player. And we were actually doing Steppenwolf material. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I got an opportunity, coincidentally, to sing on the Bob Rivers show. Um, Bob Rivers is in the audience tonight. And if everybody could just say, hi, Bob, that would be great. Coincidentally, the scholarship, the Matthew Chave Scholarship that I was awarded, is sponsored by Mr. Bob Rivers. Yes, please give him a big hand. So things were happening, and I was enjoying life. My life was active, my wife and I were active, and unfortunately things happened. Things happen in life. And I unfortunately uh, had to deal with chemotherapy, had injuries on the job that caused me to have three separate shoulder surgeries within a year. And I could no longer do the work that I'd grown up doing. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily the epitome of what you would call a college student. In fact, I'm just a little bit older than your average college student. 10 days, I'll be 54 years old. So, yes, thank you. Whoever did that, thank you very much, because trust me, I'm excited about it. <laughs> so, at this particular juncture in my life, um, my wife and I really talked about what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And from my perspective, the best years of my life were still ahead of me. So I had to figure out what I really wanted to do. What do I love? There's two things I really love in life, music and my wife. Those two things I honestly do love. And 
what I do best is sing and build things. Or I help people build things. I manage projects, things like that. So I thought, okay, how can I combine these things and come up with something that's going to make me a living, right? And I thought, wow, I've always loved radio. Let me check this out. Let me see if there's something there. So I literally sent out several emails, probably about 15 to 20 emails to universities, colleges around the area um, that had a broadcast program. While I was doing this research, I had heard nothing but great things about Green River Community College and the broadcast program that it had right here in my backyard. Then I found out a couple of the producers on Bob's show went to this particular college. Pedro and Luciana, who were his producers for a decade, I believe, right, Bob? Came right here. So, I mean, the credentials were there. Now, coincidence number two. Like I said, I love baseball, and I'm a baseball freak. The guy that runs the radio program here, for those of you that don't know, some of you do, he's a baseball freak, too. And there's a reason he's not here tonight. <laughs> he's playing baseball in Florida. I wish I was with him. No, I'm kidding. This is awesome. And Tom Evans Krause, I've known for almost a decade. He was one of the emails that I got back, the email addresses that I got back after sending out those inquiries. Tom Krause, really? Known him for, like I say, about a decade. He actually got me to sing the national anthem at Safeco Field several years ago in 2007. Wonderful, wonderful man. Had no idea he was in radio. I do now. Called him up that day, set an appointment, came in, talked to him in his office, and I basically just said, hey, Tom, this is awesome. I mean, I had no idea you were in this business. I'm thinking about getting into it. Tell me about it. Tell me about it, really. And I said, I said really, the, the biggest question that I have right now is what am I going to do when I grow up? He said, Rob, you don't have to worry about that. This is radio. You don't have to. It's okay. We're all kids around here. So I appreciated that. That was great. Oh, and one last coincidence, my nickname is just said is Gator, but I've had it for 15 years. I had no idea that when I ended up going to school, I'd be going to the Green River Gators. So Gator is now a Gator totally, to the bone. So that's where the coincidences stop, by the way, and the work started. I had no idea how hard this was going to be. I really didn't. I set goals, I planned my work, and I did what I knew I needed to do. And I got some absolutely amazing instruction from the people here, including sometimes Mr. Bob Rivers, who, who comes in and, and sits in classes and, and imparts his wisdom to future broadcasters like myself. And it's been amazing, an absolutely amazing time. Like I say there's been some rough times and I've tried to persevere. Toughest thing for me was to schedule and make sure I have time for my family. That was the hardest thing for me, I'll be honest with you. And my lovely supporting and understanding wife Sandra over here is, uh, <laughs> she's, she's really the reason that I'm standing here in front of you today. That's no joke. Not at all. So thank you, honey, very much. I was, I was fortunate enough when I first started to get an internship with Hubbard Broadcasting up in Factoria. Great outfit. They, taught, they have taught me a lot and are still teaching me a lot. Um, but I got to say, the, the instruction that is here in this particular institution is far and above the greatest. That, that, and I, I don't know how many people have told me the same thing. And I can certainly back that up, no question about it. One of the things that, that all of those instructors have told me is what is important, most important in radio, Rob, is relationships. And that I've had, I've, I've had the absolute pleasure 
not only as I mentioned to meet Bob prior to this and have this glorious coincidence happen, um, but lots of other people as well, including Mr. Jim Campman, who is here tonight with us, one of our instructors, uh, has been in radio in this area for umpteen decades. Um, <laughs> yes, Campy, yes, umpteen decades, that's right. Mark Kay, uh, the general manager at Hubbard. Um, Brad Nolan, one of the DJs there. All these people have just been absolutely wonderful to me. So my goal is to not only make Mr. Rivers proud, make my instructors proud, and all of you proud, but also to get out there and make a living and make a difference in broadcasting. That's what I want to do. And that's what this scholarship is going to help me do, Bob. And I, in conclusion, let me thank you from the bottom of my heart, you and Lisa both. They've been, they've been uh, helping out people here for years. And I'm so glad that you were here tonight to, to help me share this. And I really appreciate it. Bob Rivers, the foundation. To all of you that are here, to all the students and recipients, um, thank you and God bless. Appreciate it. So I just want to make sure we see those folks one more time. Bob Rivers, Jim Kentman, and your lovely wife, Sandra. Sandra. Yes. 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 So thank you very much for supporting. Rob, get her, go get him. So at Green River, uh, for a long time, we've known that we're not just a little slice of Auburn up here on Lee Hill, but that what happens at Green River Community College touches the world. And our next speaker is, gonna, is going to help us prove that. So she's taking a sip of water, but I'm going to ask her to come up here, Andalam Pofu. She is another recipient of the Ford and Iris Basil uh, Scholarship. The Basil family lived in the community for a long time. They owned a business here in, in the Kent area, a trucking firm. And when Mr. Basil had some heart problems, Green River had a program called Capri, which is a cardiac rehab program. And Mr. Basil was one of the first people to get some help through that program. So Green River students and staff helped him during that rehab. And he made Green River part of the, one of the organizations he wanted to give back to. And he did that by creating the scholarship not only to support nursing students, but to support young and future business leaders such as Ashley and Andale. You're a little taller than Rod. A little. My name is Andale Mpofo. I am a second year student here at Green River um, Community College. I am majoring in business and economic development. I come from Zimbabwe, a country that sits right above South Africa. For those that may not be familiar with it, it is famous for um, its beautiful Victoria Falls. I'll just go ahead and tell you a little bit about my background. I am born in a family of two girls. I finished my high school in the year November 2012 after a long a long period of six years moving back and forth schools during my high school. In 2008, Zimbabwe experienced a severe economic meltdown. We will talk of 231 million inflation rate. Yeah, I did say 231 million inflation rate, with, more, with about 80% of the population living on less than $1 a day. By the end of the year 2008, both my parents were out of, work, out of their jobs. My sister and I had to be pulled out of school. My sister had to be homeschooled. But out of some sacrifices done by my parents, they managed to put me back in school as I was an all-level exam candidate. My sister, my mother, and I also had to move out of the house as it happened to be 
a company house and my dad was no longer employed by that company. My dad moved to South Africa in search of job opportunities where he is right now as well, still in search of that, um, still in search of those opportunities. With no much options left, my father decided to sell his livestock in order to get me started with school. That is my college education. However, the Zimbabwean economy has continued to significantly decline to the extent that my parents are not in a position to continue supporting me as far as my status are concerned. I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, the Iris and Ford Basel Scholarship for such um, an award, a scholarship award that they have given me. It will definitely go way beyond anyone could ever imagine for me. Um, without you, Mr. Ford Kinney, I would not have made it this far. Even though I work at the International Programs Office to support myself and pay for my tuition, it would not have been enough. And the scholarship just came in just at the right time for both me and my family. I came to know about Green River Community College through my aunt and uncle, Felix and Juliet Kumalo, who happen to be my guests as well today. And I am really um, thankful for what they have done. They have been, they have made it feel like home away from home for me. My vision for the future is to work in developing countries with underprivileged youth and disadvantaged women under the United Nations. I have seen how women and the youth in developing countries are part second class when being compared to men. For the simple reason that they believe that women, after they finish, with, after they finish their studies, they're just going to get married, have kids, and that's much about it. Whereas men are given more opportunities academically, socially, economically. And I would want to be part of those pe people that go out to make the difference, even if it might start with me. To ensure I'm on the right track, I have also managed to contact a Green River Community College alumni, Mami Oshiro, who is currently working for the United Nations in New York. And today she just sent me an email letting me know she's got one more person that she would want me to meet to ensure that I stay on the right track and end up where I want to be. After I graduate from Green River Community College, that will be next year in spring, I plan to transfer to a four-year college if I manage to secure enough funding to do so, which I am working tirelessly to ensure I get in order to get to where I want to be in life. And I will definitely not disappoint Mr. Ford Kenny. Again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Green River Foundation Scholarship for such an opportunity. You got no idea what a difference it's making. Thank you. And uh, some of you may have caught there was the name Ford, but with two different last names. So the uncle was Ford Basil, and he left a legacy here at Green River, both through the scholarship, and every time you walk outside at uh, the edge of the uh, commons where we have our beautiful water wall, there's a garden right there. And he and Iris also gave us a sum of money to complete that project. And then there's Ford Keeney, his nephew, 
who started life up here in the Kent area. He went into the Navy. He came back and needed to kind of get his head on straight. He came to Green River. And he had a good experience here, a great experience here. And he went to the University of Washington. Cougars, that's OK. It did a good thing. Ford Basil was a cougar. Ford Keeney then served in the city of Kent as a leader. He was a Kent Rotarian. And then he was on the Green River Community College Foundation Board. Now he's a business owner down in Orlando, Florida. He got tired of these windstorms. <laughs> Traded that for hurricanes. Who can tell? <laughs> but I mention his name because this is a special week with Veterans Day. A couple years ago, we were starting our Veterans Educational Transition Fund. And uh, Ford Keeney and his family stepped up and provided a leadership gift when the Kent Rotary made that the funded item at their auction. So our scholarship program works together with other programs on campus, our Veterans Educational Transition Program, our SAFE Fund, which is Student Assistance for Emergencies. It works in concert with the Student of, uh, Affairs, with the faculty and the staff on this campus to ensure that students like Andale and Rob and Ashley can have success. And so thank you for alluding to that and getting us to that point. I also want to thank uh, Juliet and Felix because I think that when we, uh, earlier, when George asked the faculty and staff, I saw Felix, who's in the back now taking pictures, you stood, because you're, you're a teacher as well. You're a professional and you've taught, so thank you. And Anale, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. The power's still on, the trees are all still standing, and we have one more student speaker that you don't want to miss. Our next speaker is the recipient of the Mr. and Mrs. K.J. Titus Scholarship. Her name is Samira Mustafa. She's in our Early Childhood Education Program. She's going to graduate soon. She's a proud mom of two kids in the Kent School District. For you Kent Rotarians out there, we gave one of them a dictionary on our dictionary day. But uh, Samira has a great story to share, and I'm eager for you to hear that. Thank well, you. Before you do, step back. Oh, yeah. Just want to make sure you all get a chance to see her as well as hear from her. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Samira Mustafa, and I'm from Iraq, Baghdad. I have left my country since 2006 because of the bad situation there. My family and I moved to Syria and lived there for four years as a refugees. The cost of living was relatively high in Syria, and the Iraqi refugees were not allowed to work effectively, making the entire community depend on aid from non-governmental organization. At that time, we just escaped from the misery of Iraq and we came to another kind of misery where there isn't enough money to support a family. After that, we applied to come to the United States to find a better place for my family. We arrived in the United States on September 2010. I have lived close to half of my life in war and finished high school in Iraq. Right before I left Iraq, I saw a bomb exploded at my school and like a nightmare. I saw people killed in front of me. But my nightmare has stopped since I came to the United States. I have no longer lived in fear, but instead I have hope for a better life. When I arrived, I never speak English. So I enrolled in ESOL classes at Green River Community College. I was placed in level two ESL classes. Then I progressed in my English and I reached level six. I always wanted to follow in my mother's footsteps and become a teacher. I took CDA, Child Development Association certificate. After that, my mom passed away in one of Iraqi hospitals because of the lack of medical attention in Iran. When my mom passed away, I lost hope in everything. 
I was not able to make a clear decision. It was a very difficult time for me. After a week, my mother's school sent me their monthly newsletter in which they wrote an article about how great my mom was and how she helped her student who always remembers her because of her impact of them. So I really wanted to challenge myself to be just like my mom, a great teacher. I wanted to go further to continue my education to finish my AAS degree in early childhood education. I know it was not an easy job, but I wanted to do it. After three years of attending classes at Green River Community College, I speak good English now. And this is my last car to get my degree. While attending classes here to get my degree, I was doing work study at the Korean River Child Development Center, which led to part-time position as educator assistant now. I will not stop here because my goal is to get my bachelor degree to set a, goal, a good role model for my children and let them feel the power of education. I have two beautiful girls. My oldest is eight years old and my youngest six years old. My husband goes to school here too in, at Green River Community College. He finished his AAST in IT networking and he is in a bachelor program now. My husband was a great support for me and he always was there when I needed him. He used to give me a little push when I feel that I was overwhelmed by the amount of work, household, children, homework, and my homework too. Finally, I want to say to everybody who works at Green River Community College is amazing. I want to thank all my instructors who helped me to improve my English skills and also the ones who helped me, me to get my degree. Lastly, I want to thank the Tatis family to who helped me this year to finish my education at Green River Community College. Thank you very much. So as, as Samira said, with her tonight is Mustafa Zaki, her husband. We're gonna invite him to come up on stage. I really, I want their children to be able to cherish this photograph in the years to come, when both her parents were recognized as Green River Community College scholarship recipients, especially when they say, mom and dad, why do you always go to that place and give them so much of your time? <laughs> They'll say, this was the night, why? I also want to shine the spotlight over there to Joby Titus, the son of Kusumam and John Titus, who have funded this scholarship, and to Marianne Burns of Aero Controls, for which uh, being successful and being part of this community, the Titus family has been so generous in giving back. You know, um, won't take too much of your time, but Joby, you might share that your dad's story of coming here from India and working his way through South Seattle Community College and starting a business is very similar to some of the story we heard tonight. And then with Mustafa, he was sitting way over there to support Samira, but his scholarship family sponsors, Bill and Donna Anderson, whose uh, stepfather, Aaron Powers, funded his scholarship, are sitting right over here, and we had a chance to talk earlier. So you can see how this all works throughout the room, the connections that happen. So with you up here, we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. There's a couple of little things we want to make sure you know. On your tables, if you haven't discovered them already, are certificates for every student. Not for the uh, donors today, but for the students. They have your name and your scholarship, and that's something for you to remember that your scholarship, this isn't just financial aid. This certificate demonstrates that there's somebody out there has invested in you personally, and they want to see you succeed. So please take that certificate and find a good place for it. For those of you, if for some reason there's not a certificate at the table, we have a box of them out the back and our staff can help you find them. And speaking of those folks, Beth Gatsky, our scholarship, manager of our scholarship program, who read and put together so many of your applications and helped seat you where you are tonight. And Megan Evans, our master of events, 
for these uh, planning, and Patsy Cadwell, a development specialist extraordinaire, and Matt Swenson, who's working with our staff across campus to bring grants, but also to put up signs so you know where the building is, and Monica Tolis with our Inner Urban Center for the Arts, and then of course George Frazier. Thank you for the work you do on behalf of these students in concert with our faculty and our staff and our administrators and our foundation board directors. This was an amazing evening. We're sorry to say that this would be the last time for this event in this building. We hope it was a special one for you, and we look forward to welcoming you in the new Student Life Building next fall. Thanks, and thank you again, Mustafa and Samira, and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>